Morning everyone, Nick from Meat Smoke Fire here for another live cut. I think this is the 19th or something like that. Um, sorry we're a tiny bit late, we had a bit of technical difficulties there. Um, not up to standard, my camera girl today. No, I'm joking, I am totally joking. Um, so, <laughs> um, yeah, hopefully you're all enjoying this balmy bank holiday weekend. Um, you'll notice I haven't got my flip flops on today, uh, unusually, um, but it's freezing. Um, Anyway, I'm going to do the usual, introduce who we've got. So, uh, Andy's Andy. back in her winter gear because it's freezing. It <laughs> so she's popped in to help us this morning. Uh, we've got Helena and her mum. So Helena's on the keyboard, so she'll be answering all your questions and so on. Um, so she's a little bit behind us, um, as you can see. Um, anyway, I'll hand you back to Andy. Right, we have three as usual three recipes today uh we are going to do we're going to start by making dessert so we're going to do the tart to tan that andrew lawrence has been banging on about for weeks for me to do it we're going to do it and guess what he's not on this this uh uh feed because he's flying back from sardinia for the second time during lockdown very rude anyway so uh the tart to tan isn't for him um so, but we're going to start with that. I'll just show you. I've already started it a little bit. I'll just show you what's going on. Uh, we are going to cook some um, falafel. Uh, so a vegetarian option today. Uh, we're going to use the wok uh, in the expander and I'll show you what's going on with that. Uh, sorry, we haven't put the sock on the camera. So if it's breezy, do wave or tell us or something. Um, but there's not a lot we can do about it now. Um, we normally put a sock over the microphone to make it so it doesn't, you know, get a lot of wind noise anyway um, so we're going to do falafel um, we're going to show you how to make those uh, and then we're going to do the flatbreads some pita breads to put them in so those are the three things today oh and I might do a, I'm going to do a, a raita to go with the flatbread so we've got a little bit of lunch a kebabby style thing flatbread and then some tart to tan sounds good I hope um, as usual ask your questions get uh, you know post them type them in Helena will write them down and we'll come back to them because I'll keep asking them, so do ask the questions. Uh, there might not be that many today because I guess it's bank holiday weekend and everyone's on holiday. So I don't know how many we've got on, but 22. 22, so lovely little group. Anyway, right. So come on over, Andy. We have an egg that set up at 180 degrees. It was bang on 180 degrees when I put it on. But if you look at it now, Andy, I don't know if you can come in and have a look, it will be showing slightly less. So 150, 160, okay? Um, it was at 180 degrees and I haven't adjusted it. And if I took out what I've got in here, it would still be at 180 degrees. But what happens when you're doing this cook is there is steam coming off and the steam will reduce the temperature. So let's have a little look in here. I'm gonna burp it and we have uh, one of my T Fallon Genio pans. Uh, in that pan, about five minutes ago, we popped uh, 100 grams of sugar and 100 milliliters of rum, spiced rum we used for this one. And you can see it's boiling away and you can see there are tiny bubbles. Now what we want to do is, I'll pull this shut so it carries on boiling. Um, what we want to do is give it time so that those bubbles, um, that it boils off some of the liquid, the bubbles will start getting bigger and they'll go from being tiny little bubbles to being probably three quarters of an inch, two centimeters bubbles. And that is the point at which the caramel is starting to, to get really sticky. Um, if you go beyond that, what will happen is you'll burn it. Uh, I have done it in a class before. I may do it yet today, hopefully not. Um, but what we'll do is come back and look at this in a few minutes and you'll see the bubbles are starting to get bigger. The caramel will thicken up and then we're gonna make the tart to tan uh, and it can cook while we're doing everything else. Perfect. Right, uh, Helena, any questions so far? Yes. Perfect. How do you clean a regulator of grease buildup? How do you clean a regulator of grease buildup? Um, so, I'll do it. Let me. the wipes here I've got a regulator that is nice and hot okay um, so this eggs on it's at 180 degrees just over you can see it slipping quite nicely but if you get a lot of um, uh, grease on them then they don't slip so well so the uh, 
way to do it, get it nice and hot, open it up, watch your hands, but you can just wipe around the top. You'll take the grease off and then wipe on the bottom of this. Just be careful while you're doing it that you don't burn yourself. But when the grease is nice and hot, it will come off so much more easily. And there you go. And I'll then shut it back to where we wanted it. And that's all you need to do. If you're getting any rust spots, you shouldn't do, but you can always touch a bit of that grease on there and that will take away the rust. Um, but they shouldn't rust because they're pre-seasoned. That one at that end, I think was a prototype and does have a little bit of rust. Let me chuck that in the bin. So that's how I would clean a regulator. Any other questions? Okay, so all three of my eggs uh, are at roughly 150, 180 degrees, just slightly different setups. So one down there, we've got a direct setup. We've got that pan on there. We've got the, the heat hitting the bottom of that pan directly and we're boiling that, that caramel. Um, this one here, we're gonna cook the flatbreads on later. So it's about 180 degrees. Um, if you have a look at it and I'll put on a, uh, a pair of gloves and I'll lift it out to show you what I've done. Um, we're gonna cook flatbreads two ways. So I'm just gonna show you different, two different ways. So I've got two half moon baking stones. So we've got indirect this side, and then on this side, I've got just a cast iron grid for direct. Um, so that's the beauty of the expander system is you lift it all out um, and we've got the multiple layers. So that one's at 180. So we're gonna cook one flatbread on there and one on there and you'll see which one works best. And then this egg down here, um, you'll see it's lower temperature. So we're down at under 150 degrees, 140 degrees. Um, I'm doing my usual here, got a wok full of hot oil in there. And if I put the thermo pen through it, you'll see that's about 200 degrees. Even though the egg is at 140, 145, this is at 200 degrees. And that's because the wok is right by that hot flame. Um, so keep your, if you're ever cooking with fat, keep the temperature of your egg right down. The fat will come up to the temperature and that will just sit there now about 200 degrees, 180, 200 degrees. It's perfect for what we need to do. So again, using the expander basket in here and the wok sitting in that. Right, let's have a look at our caramel. So you can now see all the sugar's gone. The bubbles are getting slightly bigger, but they're not big enough yet. We've got another five minutes or so on that, I'd say. Um, and then we'll be able to put the fruit in and the other bits. So in the meantime, I'm going to start with our falafel. 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 Helena calls them falafels, and now it's got me calling them falafels. It's falafel. <laughs> um, so, right, Andy, we're here. So I'm going to make this really, I'm going to do that bit first as well. Sorry, <laughs> making you walk backwards all the time. So, um, falafel. I have chickpeas, and they are dried chickpeas that soaked overnight in water. And all I'm going to do is put them through into my salad spinner. These are about three times the size now of what they were uh, a little while ago uh, or when I last night. So I'm going to put them in the salad spinner just to dry them off. If you haven't got that, you can do them in uh, uh, with just paper towel. That'll do. And now they can go straight into our blender. So I'm going to use the Thermomix today. So we're going to go straight in. Sorry? Yeah, seen it. Right, we have three lots of herbs. I've got about 20 grams of mint. So that's just going to go on the top. I've got about 20 grams of parsley, black parsley, straight on the top. And about 40 grams of coriander. Now, um, Often you use the coriander stalks. I've avoided those because they make it a bit stringy. So just use the leaves. So 40 grams of leaves. So in there we've got those herbs. We've got the chickpeas. I've got um, half a teaspoon of, uh, I'm gonna get this around the wrong way, coriander. I've got a teaspoon of cumin and I've got three um, chopped bits of garlic. Put those in. I have three quarters of a teaspoon of baking so um, powder just to make them puff up a bit. I've got black pepper, chili, and um, ground down cardamom pods. So they can all go in, and this is the easiest recipe. Lid on, turn it up. Now what 
I'm looking for is not a paste, I want them to be a little bit chunky. So Andy, if you come in and have a look, I'm just gonna mash them around a bit, but you can see it's already nice, chunky, there's big bits in there. It smells fine, doesn't it? Yeah, 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 it smells really good. Let's do it a little bit more. And that mm. is perfect. Sorry, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> So it's just like a, a, a thick, there's some whole ones in there, it doesn't matter, but just like a, a, a thick, bigger than sand, I guess. Um, now what you need to do is put that in a bowl and put it in the fridge for 30 minutes. And um, then once you put that in the fridge, it will then start to soak all the, all the juices together. Um, you'll be then able to form it into balls. So I'll show you that in a bit. Let's go and have another look at this. So, we're starting to see some of the bigger bubbles. Probably another two or three minutes. You just have to watch this. Um, you see these bubbles forming? Getting put nice and big down here. Um, it means the caramel's thickening up. The one thing you must never do with the caramel, um, I put the sugar in, I put the, the, the booze on top of it, um, but what you must never do with the caramel is stir it. As soon as you put a spoon in and stir it, it will crystallize. Um, you also need to make sure your pan is perfectly clean. Anything in there, it will crystallise around that. The whole lot go white. It's no good to you. So that is going to be two to three minutes. So while we're waiting for that, I'm going to go and get the peaches ready. So we're going to make a peach tart to pan. So I'll bring the pan over here when we're done. Put that in my bowl. It's probably going to blow across the garden today. So we've got some flat peaches. Um, so just going to run the knife around them, split them in half, and then just cutting away from you, just cut around the stone. So I tend to twist the peach um, like that, and we probably need four of these, I'd have thought. We might have to do the last one. So, come on, twist. Stone will stick in one half, and then just cut around. I tend to, again, move the peach, not the knife. And you won't cut yourself. You all right there, Andy? Yeah, something just buzzed right in my ear. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, while I'm doing this, any questions, Helena? Uh, no, I don't know. Come on, people. What's everyone cooking this weekend? And can we have photos? Yes. I just yeah. said to people... Oh, cool. Morning cheese. Cheese in South London. No, West London. Not South London. What's going on about? South West London, I think. I have no idea where he is now. I did a cooking class at his old house. <laughs> where are your cheese? Tell everyone. <laughs> or don't. Cheese has a lovely XL uh, and has the most amazing, from what I've seen on the photos, amazing new garden kitchen in his new house. So, lucky cheese. Oh, got Franco yeah. in the new Neverton Foundry pan. Paella, Netherton Foundry, yeah. So, so yeah, lots of people have kept asking about the paella pans. I use the Netherton Foundry 14-inch uh, uh, prospectus prospector pan. It's brilliant um, as my paella pan. Fabulous. Don't know why Big Green Egg stopped doing them, but um, it is the best. So, so we've got some here. Someone doing some baked potatoes. Baked potatoes. Chocolate oh. skillet cookie. We've got oh. stir fry. Nice. Uh, pizza. Pizza, I hope Tonight, you can hit. Lamb tomorrow. Oh, what oh, sort and, of lamb? Uh, don't know. And oh. uh, tomorrow, someone's baking their Christmas cake. Oh, oh, get in. Great time of year to do your Christmas cake because then you can feed it brandy all year. Okay. Uh, so we normally put in a, nearly a bottle into a cake over the period of the year. Keeps for years. So we've got one. We've got one that sits in our camper van. Um, it's been in there probably three years, years. <laughs> three years and every time we pull up we go for a walk we cut a bit off we have a cup of tea in the camper van a bit of cake okay so but, we've got half but a, uh, christmas cake on the egg fabulous half a leg of lamb half a leg of lamb uh, karen's doing rose pork tomorrow oh um, all these lovely things dina's asked yeah what would be the ideal beef joint to put on Oh, ideal beef joint to put on the spit. So this is Dean who bought one of the Let's Q spits from me. Um, Picanha. 
<laughs> Picanha. Um, so beef rump cap. Uh, do it the Argentinian way. Look at that. That is perfect. So can you see those bubbles now? You can just see it starting to change colour. Tiny bit around the edges. You don't want to take it any further than that. Otherwise you'll end up with a pan of black stuff. Uh, and it's really difficult to wash out. Quick, whip it so, off then. So we're going to take it off. We're going to bring this. I'll bring these other two bits over here. I'll put it, I'm going to put it on my trivet, he says. Right. Can you take that out of the way for a sec? Yeah. I'll put it down there on the trivet. Now, you can let that cool down a bit. Um, it is nuclear at the moment, so don't go putting your fingers in there unless you want to do a bank job. Um, it'll take your fingerprint straight off. I'm going to do it, so I'll just be careful. So I will bring it up here, and I'm going to put these peaches in. I'm going to put them um, flesh side inside. Put them in away from you and don't touch the caramel because uh, it will hurt a lot. I think we're going to be all right with what we've got. We'll space them out, get that one in the middle. Oh, look at that. So, one spare there. So we've just got the caramel in there. You can see it's, can you see it's setting already? If I tip it, you can see it's, it's, it's gooey. It's really gooey. Um, to that, we're going to put about 50 grams of butter. Um, tell a good story. I had a, I gave a lesson once. I can't remember who it's for, but on the, um, I asked people to, to provide the ingredients and I put um, 50 grams of cubed butter on the list of ingredients. And um, they said to me when I got to the class, um, we've only been able to get normal butter. We couldn't find cubed butter anywhere. So, um, <laughs> uh, so I have to be a bit more specific sometimes. So, um, so about 50 grams of butter, and this is what makes it delicious. So just sprinkle that around. Um, there we go. Oh, we've got someone on the beach in Calgar. Oh, it's a bit like that here today. Just no, it's not. About it's really 20 not. 20 degrees colder. Um, yeah, they questioned me um, why I'm wearing a t-shirt. Uh, why not? I've got my apron on, it keeps me warm. Right. Um, Puff pastry I made earlier, as usual. Done that gag, how many times now? Um, About 19. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is just, uh, this is just, um, it's not the stuff with loads and loads of butter in it. Don't buy that, just buy the normal puff. Uh, roughly guess what your, how big your plate is, like that, or your pan <laughs> is. Pop that back on top, take my handle off, put it over the top like that. And then I'm gonna use the knife and the rim of the pan. Try and cut away from you. To get the puff pastry in there. That's rubbish. Um, so then carefully just push the edges down. So what I'm doing is trying to tuck them down, try not to get any of that caramel on you. Okay, simple as that. So that is just the caramel, the butter, the, uh, the peach halves. I'm going to put a tiny cross in the middle to stop it puffing up too much. And that is all you need for tart to tan. And that can now go in and that will take about 25, 30 minutes. Our egg has got a little bit warm, so I'll just turn it down. Um, pop that in top, on the top, and that's dessert sorted. Right. Set the timer. Set the timer for 25 minutes. Okay, 25 minutes of counting. Wow, technology Boom. works. Right, any questions, Helena? Uh, can you remind people what size pan and make it with the That is a Tefal Ingenio pan. <laughs> I want to say it's a 28 centimetre, but it might be the 26. I think it's the 26. Um, but the important bit is you have a dinner plate that is just slightly bigger than it. Because when you tip it out, it's, you've got to tip it out on something. Um, if your dinner plate is smaller than your pan, you're going to get molten um, caramel all over your fingers. So uh, the key is to have a dinner plate bigger than it. It doesn't really matter how big it is. Um, if you're using a bigger pan, you can make slightly more caramel. So a bigger pan, just do 25 grams more sugar, 25 grams uh, milliliters more booze. Uh, but they're T. Falingenio, 
I use the stainless steel ones. I've got the aluminium ones as well. They are nowhere near as good. The stainless steel ones are awesome. Um, they are quite expensive, but those are eight years, nine years old, something like that. We use them in the camper van. They are superb. Um, that's the first set. Love them. Right. So, as per Blue Peter, <laughs> here's some falafel I made earlier. So, what I have done, it's almost fridge-like out here today, so I'll show you. See if this one falls apart. Um, if I put this down here, I pretend this has been in a bowl, and I just use a, a dessert spoon, push it together like that, grab it, and then squidge them together, and make them into, what's that? Less than a golf ball. Um, so probably three centimeters across. It's actually holding together okay. And what you should be able to do with that amount of um, mixture, like that, is you should be able to get 18. So I think now that I've put one extra on there, you'll notice there's exactly 18 on the plate. Because <laughs> I only made 17 earlier. Right. So let's show you what's going on with the oil. Um, we're not on fire. Um, we are at 290, oops, he says lifting the thing out. 200, just over 200 degrees C. Um, it's absolutely perfect got a slotted spoon and I'm going to do these in batches so I'm going to do, put in four at once for the first four just lower them in gently and then I'll do another four or five uh, nine lines 18 so yeah four and five just move them around and we're going to fry those so I've got the, the oil's about three centimetres deep. We're going to fry those for uh, just so, so until they warm through and the outside goes a lovely brown and crispy. Um, so let me wash my hands while we're waiting for those. Not very exciting, this. <laughs> right. Any other questions, Helena? No? Okay. Fine. Get back in and have a look at these. So every so often, just give them a little swizzle around. You see the colour on them changing from that gr They'll go a brownie colour on the outside. The inside will stay lovely. That lovely green, herby flavour will stay in there. So let's give those a couple of minutes. So we'll prep the next lot. Do, do some garlic chopping while we're at, at it. So I'm going to do a raita to go with it. So we'll just get a clove of garlic, take the ends off. Raita, do you mean tzatziki? Uh, I do mean tzatziki. So, just checking, checking. Yeah, you know, <laughs> they're very similar. No? Oh, getting the chopsy lot, lot today. Um, so we'll get our clove of garlic, just get it chopped up roughly. me and then get some salt on it so a little bit of salt and then use your knife blade away just to press down on your garlic mr wasp go away and you can see it just puts it into a paste obviously you can put it through a garlic press uh i don't know one one, one thing the, you don't know. Yeah, one of the kitchen gadgets I haven't got. So we have some homemade uh, Greek yogurt, not Greek style yogurt. By the by a stuff. F A. F A G. What? How do you spell it? F A G. I think. Yeah, phage or it's called Fi A. Apparently, I'm going to put that garlic clove in there. Um, we are going to chop some uh, cucumber. This is about half a cucumber, and then I'm going to use my spoon. Do you ever just use take the, the lazy garlic in a jar? <laughs> no. <laughs> Jeez. 
Oh, Franco. Lazy garlic in a jar, absolutely not. Fresh garlic every time, come on. Um, let's just go and check those before I burn them. Oh no, they're looking all right. A little bit more. Can you see they're starting to go brown? If anything, we could turn it up a tiny bit. What's that? Yeah, the oil's cooled down because we put more in. So I'm just going to open the top a little bit, bottom a little bit. The oil was at 150, so we want to get it back up. So just open it a little bit, that will uh, get it warmed up. So we need some cucumber to go in it. So I'm just going to cut it into strips. Okay, so Jane has asked, she would like to try a low and slow pulled beef, but there are only two of us. What is the smallest size of joint you could use? Um, I'd go for a couple of kilos. Um, otherwise it would just dry out. Um, so go for a couple of kilos. Um, but what you'll need to do with the smaller joint is uh, maybe a kilo and a half in fact. Um, what you need to do with the smaller joint is um, you're just going to wrap it earlier than you normally would. So normally you'd cook it and so when you cook a piece of beef um, the temperature will rise and then it will start to slow down and you'll get to about 75 degrees and the temperature will go flat. It's called the stall and it's as the outside layers of the meat are drying out. Um, uh, so uh, at that point then I'd wrap it and what you can do if you're cooking at 110 um, technique I learned the other day from um, the PitQ uh, box. I think it was PitQ or was it Hawksmoor I did? Oh God, now I don't know. I've done two in them recently, but um, either way, it's still um, still um, Richard uh, Richard Turner. I mean, he's executive chef of both Pit was executive chef of Pit, PitQ and uh, Hawksmoor. Um, but um, the technique was to wrap it in foil, then wrap it in cling film, and then wrap it in foil. Cling can go up to about 240 degrees. So it, um, wrapping it in the cling keeps all the moisture in there and it won't dry it out and it will speed it up. So, so a piece of beef like that's probably going to take you eight, nine hours uh, for, uh, to cook slowly. So a um, piece of chuck would be great, uh, brisket, uh, but probably go for a piece of chuck. Uh, a bit cheaper than brisket at the moment, I would have thought. Um, so try that. Um, yeah. Right. So we've got cucumber in there. We've got man uh, mayonnaise. Uh, Greek yogurt. Um, proper Greek yogurt. Um, wouldn't be a class here if I didn't use the lemon squeezer. This lemon's huge. Some lemon in there. Don't forget the falafels. Yeah. We're good. I'm go over in a sec, and then a bit of mint. In fact, let's have a look at the falafels. And We'll come back. Oh yes, look at those. That one's a bit different colour, but I'm going to take, I'll well, give them another minute and then we'll put the second batch on. It's cooled down nicely, it's nice for this one. Perfect. Uh, best to cook beef flank. Beef flank. Oh. Um, flank is one of the other tougher cuts. Um, I've not cooked a lot of beef flank. Um, I would go for a low and slow on it uh, for sure because it's a tougher cut. So I'm just going to take these uh, leaves off the mint, get some of this in there. Um, so yeah, low and slow, cook it. Uh, same same technique as we just explained for the chuck. This is going to be interesting. Probably blow away faster than I can pick them. Um, so yeah, um, look up a guy called, going. I'm going to chop these and I'll do some more. Um, look up um, Bill Gardner, uh, Barbecue Bill on some of the forums and ask him that question. Or have a look in uh, Neil uh, Rankin's book, um, a brilliant book, uh, Slow I think it's called. I'll have a look after the class and we'll, we'll report back. Any other questions that I can't answer? <laughs> <laughs> Ask me football questions, can't answer any of those. Right, 
chop this last bit of mint up. So I just bunch it up, chop it, get it reasonably fine. Is it raining yet? No. Both Neil and Andrew and Orange have just joined. Wow! Hang on a sec, we'll go and show him. So the two brothers, one lives in Cambridge, one lives in York. Uh, as far as I'm aware. Maybe I shouldn't say things like that. Um, come with me, Andrew. You ready, Andy? Mm. It's in there. You can see it's all nice and puffed up. You see the butter or the oil coming out of the pastry, but it's going to take a little while longer. Um, so we'll come back and have a look at that in a bit. Right, falafels. Come on, Andy. <laughs> should make a fall over something, shouldn't I? Right, <laughs> they took a little bit longer because it, it cooled down a bit. I'm going to take them out, pop them on some. Oh, smell good. These are awesome. Pop them on some oil, uh, on some paper towel to get rid of the oil. And then we'll load up the next lot. Who knew? Three, three and three when you've got nine. Much easier. <laughs> <laughs> Grade A, A-level maths. Thank you. <laughs> right, um, I'm just going to wash my hands. Mm -hmm. So any questions, Helena? No. Andrew, how was your lovely trip to Sardinia? Right. Obviously, we're going to keep these warm in the sunshine. <laughs> right. So this Raita, I'm just going to... No. No. Tatsiki. Tatsiki, sorry. That's nearly it's almost the same thing. Oh, Andrew is still in Sardinia. Oh, he's still there. I thought he was flying back, what, during the class? Or have they told him he's not allowed back? Oh, sat by the pool. Ah. Oh. Oh. Rude. That's just rude. Mm -hmm. We'll just eat you can this go tart off to people. Tan. Yeah, we'll eat, eat the tart to tan in front of him when it's the best one I've ever done. Right. Okay, so Dean has asked what temp and how long roughly for the canya on the spit, please? And can you do one next Saturday because we'd like to cook it on Sunday? <laughs> uh, 180 degrees direct on the spit. It's going to take you about 45 minutes, apparently. Seems like a long time. I've not done it yet. Um, I'll report back. Um, I will do one. Maybe we will do it in the class next week. Class. We'll do it when. Um, yeah. I'm coming out. <laughs> You're coming for that. Good on one, you, Mum. Is that right? That's it. Oh, Invite yourself for the good lunches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you don't. <laughs> Okay, remind me what's in the tzatziki? Yogurt, uh, mint, garlic, cucumber, salt. Yes. Yogurt, mint, garlic, cucumber, salt. That's it. Very simple. There is a recipe on my website. Um, you can taste it. You might need to put a bit more salt than we put oh, in. Oh, and lemon. Oh, and lemon juice, of course, yeah. Thank you, whoever said and lemon. Me. Yeah. yeah. Your oh. wife. Oh. <laughs> She's got your back again. Yes. Mm. Oh, rubbish like that. Right. Uh, so, Dean has asked, would you put anything on the pan? Would I put anything on? No, just keep it simple. Maybe some salt, or definitely some salt. If you've ever seen me cooking beef, um, yeah, some molten salt, get that on there, um, and then just spin it up. And what they do, what you need to do, it's a triangular cut of meat. You need to work out which way the grain is running. Um, so it will have grain running from one corner, and then cut with the grain, cut it into three strips. And then you can bend the strips round and put the skewer through like like that. Does that make sense? Um, maybe if I, I'll grab a skewer. Hang on. Get rid of these bits. Here's one I found earlier. But yeah, so if that's your picanha, you're gonna feed it through like that in a horseshoe shape, three bits of it on here but cut the picanha along the grain, because then when you're cutting it into slices afterwards, you'll be cutting across the grain and it'll be more tender. Does that make sense to everyone? But yeah, put it on a spit like that. Okay, so we've had a second request for picanha on the spit from Andrew. Perfect, we'll do picanha on the spit. That means I've got to practise this week and I get to do it in class next week. <laughs> Quitting, well not quitting, it's out. That'll be a th that's 60 quid's worth of meat down the drain. 
Right, let's go and see how our falafels are doing. Doing nicely, give them a little bit of a stir. It's a little bit warmer now, but they're all staying together. Even that one that I didn't put in the fridge. I'll put that one back there. Looking good. Let's have a look at our tart. Oh, getting a nice bit of color on the top there. Now, this is where you need to be a bit careful. I'm just gonna go and grab a spoon. see what color the caramel is um, if I do it over here you'll probably be able to see it a bit it's still really thin and gloopy um, so it's got a little while you can also get a bit on your spoon you can see it's not brown um, so it's not ready yet um, there's no it just takes whatever time it takes um, depends on how much liquid is in your peaches or your apples or whatever you're using um, but you're looking for it to just start to change color and go quite thick and it will start to stick to your spoon we don't want is a really thin one where you turn it out and it's all runny. You want to get a bit of colour on it. Okay. Let's get those falafels out. Sorry, Andy. Let you do the backward walk. <laughs> Look at those. Oh, the warmth coming out. Yeah. <laughs> it's freezing here today. Why am I in a t-shirt? I'm going to take one of those outside. Just. Whoop. Oh, well saved. Don't want to lose them. <clears throat> More people to feed this lunchtime. Right. But just so you can see it. This is one of the cooler ones, just so I can pick it up. Um, it's crispy. Mm, mm, mm. That looks oh. good, doesn't it? I'm going to tell yeah. you. Mm. That a little bit of yoghurt. Mm. Mm. Very good. Ever heard of sharing? No. <laughs> Shouldn't have eaten Oh, they so smell amazing. Right. So, sorry, bit, bit of drink. I'm going to do some pizza snacks. Sorry, I thought I'd got to grab the wasp. It wasn't, it was a wedding ring. <laughs> 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 Are you hungover this morning, Nick? A little bit. Oh, <laughs> Somebody fell asleep in a chair last night holding a glass of wine, oh, no. and then when Helena woke me up, I managed to go and threw it on myself. Oh, no. <laughs> and do you look for an internal temperature for the falafel? No, just colour on the outside. Just get go brown. Um, well, they'll be they'll be cooked. Everything in there you can eat raw. So if you want to check them, check the flavouring before you. Um, cook them that's fine um, you might put some salt in I didn't put any salt in them I let that go into the dips and stuff around them but yeah you can eat that raw so a lot of vegan food these are vegan um, it's brilliant because you can taste it before you cook it okay so uh, a couple of questions not eat anymore. Yeah. do you store the oil after a deep fry after a deep fry and if so what do you store it in yes let it cool down um, and then put it back into the bottle you got it out of or you do leave it on the air forever yeah okay so i leave it on the uh -oh. egg forever for a week that was brand new this morning um, but i did throw some away the other day uh, thanks for that Helena. okay oh. um morley stove company yeah got lots of meat this weekend ask for suggestions on pork ribs and chicken pork ribs um pork ribs got to be done low and slow three to one method i but i tend to do three and a half one and a half one so three to one means cook it indirect unwrapped for three hours cook it wrapped in foil and a bit of um, apple cider vinegar or apple juice in there wrapped in foil cook it for two hours take it out cook it for an hour and in the last 20 minutes that's when you apply the barbecue sauce um, never put barbecue sauce on your ribs at the beginning because barbecue sauce is full of sugar and it just burns anyway we need to get going because we are so far behind um, i've got two doughs um, so this is my standard bread recipe um, and today uh, I've just added three, uh, it's on the website, 
three teaspoons of sugar and you'll see there's some nigella seeds in there so i'm just going to take can you see those little black specks um just a bit of plain flour <laughs> get a little bit of dough and my rolling pin which is there i'm going to roll these out so they're about a pound coin thick does that make sense yeah. looks lush right that's one and then these ones are sourdough now these are going to be incredibly difficult to pick up because they are sourdough is a really runny uh much more hydrated mixture um, so I'm just gonna put a bit of flour on and I'm gonna be really gentle with them um, I made these last night you see the bubbles in it already um, because somebody fell asleep on the sofa um, drinking wine they didn't put them in the fridge overnight so they have proved a little bit too much but that's all right so we'll grab one of these I'll put that one there We'll go over to our egg and we'll show you two techniques. So the first, we'll do multiple. So straight on the um, car, um, ceramic like half pizza stone and this one we'll put onto the cast iron and we'll give those a second or two. Um, I'll shut the lid. What you'll see with these is they're gonna puff up quickly. Now the one that's direct on the cast iron will puff up why are you giggling? We'll puff up much quicker. I, um, so I think Siobhan is on. Siobhan Riley. I think she's now Siobhan Siobhan is the banker. And I think Siobhan is the behaviour calling the police that share with wine and others have said, you never ever been there. No, no. So thank you, Siobhan. Um, Siobhan was my old HR director when I had a proper, proper job. <laughs> Try not to do it too often. Um, if you come in, Andy, what you can see is this one's puffing up. Can you see that bloating oh, up? A lot faster than that. That's probably a little bit thick, that one. Mm. Um, I tend to like to do them direct like this. Um, I think it works better. Oh, that's as thin as. Right, shut that quickly. Let's have a little look at our... Oh, look at that bad boy. Still a bit runny. Will it be done by it? So if I take some out, you can see. Yeah. Yeah, probably that. Let's get it back in here. She's telling me I'm burning it now. Oh, I am. Oh, flip. Just caught the edge of it. Whereas this one, nada. So let's move this out. And we'll put this there. Now, the idea is that they puff up a bit and you get a pocket. What you need is steam in there. So a good wet dough. Um, and maybe if you've got them a little high up, um, it would work, work as well. But a good wet dough um, works better. Um, the steam is the bit that when it gets hot, it just it expands that pocket. So we're trying to get that. If it doesn't work, you can have them as flatbreads, put them, all the stuff on the top and eat it that way. It's still just as good. Um, this one hasn't puffed up at all. I might do. So I think I've proved that I don't like the baking stone method. While we're at it, we'll just change it, take the two halves out. I'll put one half down there. I'll go back in with that. And now I've got twice as much space. And I'll go and roll a couple more while these cook. I've got just the stainless steel for that one. It doesn't really matter. They'll just, they'll, they're going to be flatbread. So we'll just roll another one out just to prove that these ones uh, will puff up nicely. So was it the sourdough one that didn't puff? No, the sourdough one did puff. Okay. It's the non-sourdough one that didn't. Just roll it out. I wanted to show you that because most people think you've got to use the baking stone. Um, I caught my brother. He made uh, made a load of these. It was just taking forever so i said just take it off the baking stone and just cook them direct on the stainless steel and it works so much better 
Oh. Two second rule. Two second rule, exactly. It's only us. I don't run a restaurant, I never do catering, and that's why. Right, let's get that bad boy in there. That one is a bit thick, that's why. A bit doughy. Oh, that one has puffed up nicely. Um, let's move these. Whoop. Get them on there. Do another sourdough one. And then we'll serve some food. Do we need to check the... Yeah. Oh, hello. Hello. Just all covered, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Hello Coco, the bread maker extraordinaire. Um, yeah, have a look at her feet. Some of her breads are incredible. I think I've said that before in these cooks. Um, oh. You see that one bubble, bubbling up now? Mm. Nicely. The bowls. Yeah. That one's gonna be good. Give it another second or two. Oh, I'm gonna have to pull this off just so you can see it. It's not quite done, but it will do. Okay, I'll do another two or three while we do this. Have a look at that one. <laughs> that is a proper pitter. See? Oh. Ooh, a little bit warm. The edge that one's starting to bubble as well. So is that both of them now? Yep, they're both bubbling up. That's the sourdough and the normal. The one that's really puffed up is the normal that's got the um, seeds in this one. If I pull it apart, yeah, you can see it hasn't puffed and it's still a bit doughy. It was just a bit thick when I put it on. You want to roll them out so they're pound coin thick. That was just a bit thick. That one, it still tastes nice. That is how they puff up. And the steam inside will continue to cook them. Look at this one go, Andy. <laughs> Move them over. It's just like naan bread. See it puff up. Curry. Right, let's start serving up. It's and nice we'll, and warm. Yeah, give that another minute and then we'll serve up. We'll make one of these and take this one over. Get that on there, just so you can see. I'll take that out of the way. Let's just give it a quick wipe down. Don't let me burn that other one. Siobhan wants the puff one. <laughs> <laughs> Mark's just joined us. Mark Thomason? Yes. Morning Mark, up in Newcastle. Uh, so, Oop. someone's just asked, would you make the dough the day before? If I'm doing a sourdough, yes. If I'm doing a uh, normal dough, no, those were made uh, this morning. So, there's enough there. We'll, do, we'll roll some more out, but let's get this one um, and let's get it loaded. So, let's see if we can get open it up. Should do use a bread knife. Pull that back. Right, get a bit of lettuce. Washed by my own fair hand, as you can see. Uh, chopping board is still available, yes. Uh, this is the extra large one. I mean, it weighs a ton. Let's get some raita in there. That's the one thing I can't clean. It's too big, it's too <laughs> heavy. We'll get some uh, some lettuce in there. We are going to grab some tomato. Just got some cherry tomatoes. Just quartering them. I'll spread them out, just be careful with your fingers. One more. We're going to get a couple of these. 
that's still just about more. It's still, yeah? No. I reckon three in there. Don't forget the um... No, tart tan, I haven't forgotten it. Uh, little bit of coriander. Pomegranate seeds. Get some of those bad boys on there. Oh. And you can't be beat sriracha. Uh, this is the garlic paper going everywhere. This is the extra garlic version. Bit of chili sauce on there. Oh, look at that bad boy. There you go. Oh, wow. Enjoy that, Mama. Yeah. Right, I'm going to go and get that tart to tan. Let's go. And then we'll get a photo in a minute. Right. So, oh, we're about two or three minutes away from perfect, but we're going to go for it just so you can see it because we yeah, are close. running out of time. <laughs> So, this is what you need. This is why you need those Ingenio pans. Um, because you can unclip the handle. Makes this so much easier. Get your plate bigger than your pan. Turn it over. Put on a decent pair of gloves. And unfortunately these are sold out on Amazon. So I will have a look for some different ones. Everyone's favourite bit. Flip it over. Going in close. Oh, could have done with a bit more, but anyway. But for the timing wise, could have done with another five or six minutes. Oh, oh my see. God, that smells epic. Smells delicious. But that will be, that will set and go gooey. Uh, another five or six minutes, it would have been perfect. In fact, I might put it back in in a minute. Um, but have a look at the one on the website, spot on. Just, just need a little bit more. Yeah. Right, let's go and see what this is. How's that, Mama? Perfect. Delicious. Happy. Perfect. <laughs> so next week, then we're oh, gonna do. <laughs> next week we're gonna do the picanha. So we'll do something to go with it. Um, don't know what we'll do so yeah if you've got any questions ask away if you've got any uh suggestions to stuff to go with the picanha i'm thinking maybe a uh or something. i don't know maybe something like that um but yeah just uh, let us know so again thank you for joining in um ask away questions i'm around most this week playing golf on wednesday so i won't be answering questions then with Carlos. I don't know if Carlos oh. is on. Someone um, says, have you done chicken porchetta por deboned? Have I done chicken porchetta deboned? No, I've never even heard of that. 15% meter. Oh yes. Uh, we got an offer on this weekend on the meter, which I haven't used. So the thermometer that I didn't use today, but 15% um, uh, off the meter and the meter block uh, until Monday. So uh, yeah, do that. Uh, obviously still got the Let's Q rotisseries going like hotcakes, which is lovely. Um, yeah, so any ideas for next week, just let us know. Otherwise, have a lovely bank holiday weekend. Share your cooks, tag us in there, and we will see you all next week. All right, cheers, guys. Bye.